Hello, in this video, we will learn about proteins. So, in this proteins, we are going to learn about introduction part, introduction and background, and then what are peptides and these peptides which forms proteins and followed by classification of proteins, classification of proteins and functions of proteins. So these are the four topics that we are going to study in this video. So first introduction part. So what are these proteins? Actually, the proteins are protein term is a Greek language, which means primary. In the Greek language, the protein means primary. And this protein term was coined by, this term was coined by Johannes. Mulder, Johannes Mulder. It was coined by Johannes Mulder. Okay, protein term was coined by Johannes Mulder. And these proteins are constituting one by two part of half of the part of dry weight of our body. Dry weight of the body. Half part of our dry weight is constituting proteins itself. Half of the dry weight of our body constitutes proteins itself. And they are very, very important for our body, either in terms of a structure and metabolisms and uh, many functions of many organ systems, immunity, hormones, different, different categories. And all those functions we are going to learn in this category functions. Okay. So, first, what are these proteins we will define now? The proteins are proteins are polymers of polypeptides. We know what is mean by poly means many. Peptide means amino acids. Amino acids. The peptides are nothing but amino acids. And these peptides are going to form a long chains, and these long chains will be further formed into constituting proteins. So the proteins are considered as the polypeptides. Proteins are nothing but polypeptides. The different polypeptide chains are present in the proteins. So this is introduction part. Now, who is forming the proteins? Peptides are forming the proteins, right? Peptides are from the proteins. We are going to learn about it. Peptides are otherwise known as amino acids. Peptides are otherwise known as amino acids. Amino acids. And they are the building blocks of proteins. They are considered as building blocks of proteins. These amino acids are also called peptides and they are the building blocks of proteins. Building is made up of bricks and these bricks are nothing but amino acids and that building is a protein. So if protein is considered as a building and the blocks are amino acids. So it's very simple. If you break the protein, you will get amino acids. And coming to amino acids, Basic structure of amino acid is NH2, CH, COOH. So, this is a basic uh, structure of amino acid, and these amino acids are generally 300 in the nature. 300 amino acids are there in the nature, but only 20 amino acids. Only 20 amino acids will form protein. Will form protein. 
will form proteins. Only 20 amino acids will form proteins. So those 20 amino acids, this time going to give you know, first alanine, azinine, asperazine, aspartic acid, aspartic acid, cysteine, glutamine, glutamic acid, glycine, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, proline, next, serine, Triolyne, tryptophan, tyrosine, and then valine. So almost all 20 will be there. 1, 2, in the sequence only, in the alphabetical sequence, I written. Is that 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and this is 20. So totally, this 20 amino acids only finally forming the proteins. Okay, among 300 amino acids that are present in the nature, only this 20 amino acids are going to form proteins. And among this 20 proteins, sorry, among this 20 amino acids, only 10 amino acids are called essential amino acids. Essential amino acids. Only 10 amino acids are essential. I will uh, point out those amino acids which are essential to our body. Arsenic. Methionine. Phenylalanine, valine, threonine and tryptophan, histidine, isoleucine and leucine. These all are essential amino acids which I boxed arsenic, histidine. Isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, tryptophan, valine. So to remember these essential amino acids, I have a shortcut. I'll give you that shortcut now to remember these essential amino acids. So I think I can erase. So to remember all these essential amino acids, I created a shortcut. A M P V T T Hill. Very simple to remember. Andhra M P visited Tirumala Tirupati Hill. To remember easy. This A for arsenine. M for methionine and phenylalanine. Methionine and phenylalanine. V for valine. T for threonine, T for tryptophan, see Tirumala, threonine, Tirupati, tryptophan, H for histidine, I for isoleucine, U for L for leucine, L for lysine. So to remember, essential amino acids, Andhra MP visited Tirumala Tirupati here. So to remember easily. Now we are going to study about classification of proteins. Classification of proteins. 
Okay, you may ask, sir, what about non-essential amino acids? Except these 10 remaining are considered as non-essential amino acids. And also I'm going to tell you one more point is that the difference between essential and non-essential amino acids is only one point, very simple. Essential amino acids are not synthesized in the body and we take them, we procure them through our diet. And whereas non-essential amino acids, they are synthesized in the body and we need not to get from outside through diet. So essential amino acids, we get them through our diet. Okay, that is all about peptides. The second topic, peptides is time. And the next topic is classification of proteins. The proteins classification we are going to learn. Very simple. The proteins can be classified based on their property of hydrolysis. So classification based on hydrolysis, based on hydrolysis property. So based on their hydrolysis, we classify proteins. So what is mean by hydrolysis? Hydrolysis breakdown in the presence of water. That is called hydrolysis. Breakdown in the presence of water. That is called hydrolysis. So suppose if protein is broken down, let's imagine protein is broken down, what you will get generally amino acids only, know. then how can we classify based on hydrolysis? Because all proteins will consist of amino acids only, but there are certain proteins which do not contain, uh, which along with amino acids, the other components also they will contain some proteins. So based on that, we are classifying the amino acids into three types into three types. The first type, simple amino acids. Second type, conjugated amino acids. And third type, sorry, simple proteins simple proteins, conjugated proteins, derived proteins, derived proteins. So three types of proteins. The proteins classification based on hydrolysis. Three types of proteins, simple proteins, conjugated proteins, derived proteins. Coming to simple proteins. On hydrolysis, on hydrolysis produces only amino acids, only amino acids are produced on hydrolysis. They are called simple proteins. Whereas conjugated proteins on hydrolysis, on hydrolysis produces, produces amino acids along with non-protein part non-protein component. You may get a question again, what are those non-protein components? I'll tell you there are two types. If a non-protein component is, if a non-protein component is organic, if that non-protein component is organic, that is called prosthetic group. That is called prosthetic group. Prosthetic. If inorganic component along with amino acid is produced that is cofactor that is called cofactor so once again i'm telling conjugated proteins on hydrolysis produces two components amino acids non-protein component if the non-protein component is organic that is called prosthetic if a non-protein component is inorganic that is cofactor that is called cofactor for example Examples of conjugated proteins, glycoproteins, glycoproteins and phosphoproteins, glycoproteins. Okay, examples all at once are right. Next, derived proteins. These proteins are produced as an intermediates, produced as an 
intermediates intermediate products so especially during digestion uh, digestion of proteins only you will get this intermediate products okay now examples of each type of protein we will write first simple protein examples albumin albumin this is present in the blood and which maintains osmoregulation osmoregulation next example collagen it is present in the connective tissues and as well as ligaments ligaments next one more example actin and the other one myosin so this actin forms a thick filament and then myosin forms thin filament in the muscle tissue in the muscles so these all are examples of simple proteins so if you hydrolyze these proteins you will get only amino acids nothing else and coming to glycoproteins you will find in this you will find this glycoproteins in the antibodies and the antibodies are nothing but immune proteins which provides us immunity right they are the proteins only but what kind of proteins glycoproteins they are and one more example mucin m u c i n mucin and coming to phosphoproteins this phosphoproteins are very specialized proteins that you can find in the milk milk protein called casein you can find and one more protein is called lipoproteins lipoproteins you can find in the membranes biological membranes you can find this lipoproteins so glycoproteins phosphoproteins lipoproteins protein 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 common because they are proteins only but why they are conjugated because they are conjugated with non protein component like sugar phosphate fat lipo means fat only liquid so these are the three non protein components in with which the proteins are bonded so that's why they are called conjugated proteins so on hydrolysis you will get these non protein components also along with amino acids you will get sugars phosphates and lipids like that so that is conjugated proteins and coming to derived proteins and this derived proteins or as an intermediate product suppose peptidases peptidoses and peptones proteoses so these are produced as an intermediate products during the digestion process they are produced as intermediate products okay this is about the classification of proteins okay now we are going to study the functions of the proteins functions of the proteins so proteins will perform various functions in our body uh, and i have to say one point here the proteins in terms of functioning in terms of functioning in our body they exhibit a property called polymorphism poly means many morpho means forms so this proteins are exhibiting polymorphism to exhibit different functions in our body apart from providing the uh, uh, apart from providing uh, the structural uh, features to our body they also involved in other features so we are going to learn about functions now here also a shortcut i would like to give you to remember the functions of the proteins yes t c p h there is a shortcut to remember functions of all the proteins southern tra travel corporation southern travel corporation payments are high payments are high southern transport corporation or travel corporation payments are high i am writing here southern travel corporation payments high to remember only okay first what is the s stands for 
structural proteins structural proteins next this is transport proteins t for transport proteins c for contractile proteins contractile proteins and this p for protective proteins protective proteins and this h for hormones h for hormones okay so the proteins will perform different functions as structural proteins as transport proteins as contractile proteins as protective proteins as hormones also okay so first structural protein for example we have a hair right this hair is made up of a protein called keratin keratin this is the best example to describe right as well as we know we studied lipoproteins also one examples right for example we can take lipoprotein will forms membranes only not so structural protein we can say that next transport proteins in our blood we have a pigment called hemoglobin right that's a transport protein only hemoglobin and in some non cartilages that means invertebrate phyla uh, which do not have hemoglobin like some cockroach which belongs to arthropoda there is no hemoglobin but hemocyanin we can say hemocyanin is one more transport pigment coming to contractile proteins i already told you actin myosin in the classification actin myosin in the classification of proteins we discussed about this the actin forms a thick filament and myosin forms a thin filament of the muscle next with protective proteins immunoglobulins 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 or and one more interferons interferons provides immunity protective means provides immunity to the body next hormones we know that hormones are the chemical messengers of the body which involves in maintaining the metabolic functioning of the body different functions of the body and these hormones are secreted from secreted by endocrine glands we know there are many endocrine glands in our body start from if we start from hypothalamus hypothalamus thyroid thymus pituitary pineal adrenal parathyroid pancreas ovary testis so these all are different endocrine glands only which secrete different hormones and they have their specific targets on which they will act and initiate different metabolisms so in this way the proteins helps us in many ways okay so hope you understood about the proteins and if you understand the entire video please watch the entire video and like my video and subscribe my youtube channel and please share